I am Ananya Ayer and I am a grade 11 student. To celebrate the upcoming Mother's Day, I was thinking of some ideas and then it suddenly struck me who better to collaborate with than my first mentor, my best friend, my confidant, my critic and my shopping partner. Please welcome a fearless and independent woman, Dr. Nidhi Vasani Ayer. Thank you Ananya for having me on the show. But I feel you forgot to tell everyone that I am your mom as well. Nobody can forget that. Hello mom, thank you for joining us today. To describe my mother would be to write about a hurricane in its perfect power or the climbing falling colors of a rainbow. To commence this episode, I would like to hark back to my mother's childhood. If you had to describe your childhood in a single word, how would you do it? I would say change. In my childhood, change was the only constant because as you know, Nanu had a transferable job. So every two, three years we were moving cities, we were changing schools, we had a new bunch of friends. So it was not about adapting to new situations Mm. and changing. But still the constant thing we had was we were always surrounded by our parents and we had a happy family. Okay, that's great. Honestly speaking, I feel there's a lot of difference in how children were raised back then and how children are raised today. Do you find a similar difference? Do you think raising Gen Z kids like us is more difficult? Raising kids is always a tough job, but yes, there are a few basic differences which I want to highlight. We all grew up in a gadget-free childhood. So we had a lot of real friends rather than virtual friends Mm -hmm. like you all do. We never had to worry about likes and comments on Instagram or we were judged on Instagram. So life was much more easier. It was less complicated than the lives that you all lead. And we had a lot of play. You could go around, play. It was not only on the mobile or the gadgets. Nowadays, the moment a child is born, the child is all over the internet. So I think that is a drawback. But as I said, we have to adapt to newer situations. And parenting Gen Z kids, I feel, is a challenge, but it is fun as well. Okay, so do you consider yourself a perfect mom? Oh, there's nothing like a perfect mom or a perfect parent, because parenting is a journey. So I would say that you can be excellent, you can be good, but you can never be perfect. You always strive for perfection, and you put in the best for your child. So every father or every mother is going to be the best or the perfect for their child but there's nothing like perfect parenting okay i'll realize that later yeah you have some time to go (laughs) so let's move forwards towards your career as a child i'm sure nani considered you a prodigy as you were one let me interrupt every mother would consider their own child a prodigy here we'll focus only on you so you were a prodigy that's what nani goes talking around so how did you learn to accept failures after all the successes? Oh my God, that was a real challenge and this question is a tough one, Anu, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Because I was always programmed for success and I was taught how to be successful, how to be a topper, how to do the best possible. But failures taught me a lot. I had a hard time accepting failures, but it was only in college when I moved out of the comfort zone did I learn that there could be people better than me, There could be uh, people who had better abilities. So I learned a lot from them and then slowly I learned to accept failure very graciously. But I found that failures are ultimately the stepping stone to success. So you should embrace failure so that you can enjoy your success. So that's where you guys have taught me to, you know, handle how both successes and failures equally. So we're trying. That's a good thing which I have inculcated. The greatest thing that I've learned from my parents is that a dream cannot be turned into reality just through magic. It requires sweat, determination and a lot of hard work. I've seen you and dad go from a small rented clinic to now a three-storied lavish hospital. So how was this struggle? Was it tormenting or was it, you know, you, it, it made you happy? Oh, it was a real struggle from starting in a small place to moving forwards to where we are now. But you do not enjoy success if you have not struggled hard enough. And there is no shortcut to success. Whatever field you are in, whatever you do, and when you strive for success, success is about hard work, 
determination, perseverances, and definitely a lot of sacrifices too. Okay, I agree to that. So, if I talk about your speciality, why did you choose to become a gynecologist or IVF specialist about all the other varied options you had? Yeah, I did have varied options. But you know, Ananya, when it is about doctors, people fear coming to doctors because they're ill, they're sick, they're diseased. This was a branch which gave happiness. So either we are delivering happiness in the form of a child, mm -hmm. or people come to us in pursuit of happiness, like they want a child, they yearn for a child. And if I'm able to complete their dream of becoming a parent, there's nothing like it. There's no greater joy. And that is why when I started Gaini, I felt happy. But when I started IVF and infertility, I started feeling happier. Yeah, so you have delivered a lot of babies till now and given happiness to immense number of people around you. So I've, uh, when I was going through, you know, the internet, I've always read that people or the society prefers that a gynecologist should only be a female or that is what the society believes. I mean, there's a sex dis discrimination in this case. So do you believe that this is true? And Yeah, your question is very rightly put that there is reverse sex discrimination. Mostly we have preference for males over females. Yeah. And we live in a male dominant society, whatever said and done, we've moved to the Mars, but our mindsets have not changed. But yes, there is reverse sex discrimination to an extent when it comes to gynecology. But there are a lot of people, a lot of males who are doing exceedingly well. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, two of my teachers, one who was my guide in MD, was a male. My teacher who guided me through my infertility journey was again a male. And both of them were excellent. So I feel that there should be an end to the sex discrimination even when it comes to gynecology. What you need is an intelligent as well as a caring and compassionate doctor. So if the male has that quality, so be it. And in Gujarat, I've seen there are a lot of male gynecologists, although up north the scenario is different. So we need to be sex inclusive and make sure that the doctor should be good at the end of the day. I guess the society is more open to these thoughts now. Yeah, than, it's changing yeah. for sure. Okay, so I want to know how did your priorities change when you stepped into MBBS now that you have a family to take care of and now you are the joint secretary of Indian Society of Assisted Reproduction. Priorities have changed because with time things change. So you have to accept that change and embrace it as I already said. So initially when we are studies, our focus is on studies, on topping your class or choosing the branch you are interested in. Then you want to start a family and then that becomes your priority. Okay. Then as you move forward and you have a stable family life, you have a hospital which is running well, then you need to focus on academics because I strongly believe that we need to give back to the society. And we need to make more doctors who are more competent, who have learned the skills in the right way so that the patients are treated well. But let me tell you, you definitely would have realized that for me and dad, patients are the priority at the end of the day. Yeah, I've always... Uh, you know, adjusted to that thing since I was a kid. So now, if I come to your personal life, you had an intercaste marriage, you are married to an, a South Indian. I'm sure you had a kind of two states movie wala marriage. So did you fight society or how did you just do all this? Okay, so it was never fighting with the society. For me, marriage was about two individuals, but at large, it was about two families. So me and dad, did not want to elope, we didn't have options like live-in and we wanted to make sure that when we get married there are two happy families which are getting together on the same page. So we, it took time, it took some hardship but then we came to a uh, conclusion that all our parents agreed to it and then we moved forward and you know that we are a perfect Italy Dukla family where we relish yeah. both these cultures, we celebrate these cultures and you are a perfect hybrid. Yes, both Idli and Dukla. And you guys are blessed to have me, I guess. Also, I always wonder how do you multitask? You come home, you fire everyone, do this. You bring order out of chaos. You manage the hospital so well. You manage the family. How do you do this? I can't even focus on one thing. So the uh, key to multitasking is very easy. What I feel that all of us have an innate ability to multitask and more so when it comes to us females. 
but how do you prioritize things is very important. So you have to make sure you get your priorities right. If you get them right, then multitasking is easy. You focus on what is most necessary, then in the descending order of need, you try to decide your priorities and make sure that everything is carried out smoothly. So out of chaos, you can get some order. Okay, that's great. Thank you for the advice. I'll try to implement it. Coming to your decision making quality, how, what is the most difficult decision that you have to that you have had to make for yourself in your life? I guess you know the I answer. Do. Yeah, but let me tell all my viewers that the most difficult decision has been leaving behind Anu when she was barely nine months of age and going further to pursue my studies. It was very tough because she was a precious child who was breastfeeding and suddenly I had to leave her. But I think it was all worth in the end. Speaking for my part, I feel that was the best decision you ever took because since I was a small kid, it, I did not realize all this. But you know, now I feel that you've worked hard just to give me a future and I'm very grateful for that. We are really proud that you understand us and you have taken it very positively in your stride. But although as you were young, you barely missed us, we badly missed you and we passed really tough days. But yes, the result is what counts. That's fine now. We can, you know, keep adjusting or keep bonding more. Yeah. Okay. So was there any time in your life that you felt you were like at the pinnacle of success or your dreams were unfolding and coming true? Yeah, there were a lot of times and dreams, as we said, need a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but they do come true. Okay. Talking about success, I feel that success is always very relative. For me, success is about having a happy family, about having a good hospital where we give ethical care to our patients. And success in that way has come to me. But let me tell you that in my 40s, when I'm happy and content about the way things have unfolded, I always believe that that should not deter me from working harder every single day because I always feel that there's room at the top. Okay, so I feel that I've learned this through you guys that you keep pushing me to do even better than what I've already achieved and not be, you know, now this is all. Uh, there's nothing more that can be done, but I'm sure there is a lot of things. Okay, now snapping back to motherhood. How has being a mother changed you as a person? What were your successes and failures as a mom? It's always a mixed bag, but motherhood has made me more calmer, more patient, where I was always in a hurry to get something. Seeing you grow and learning from your mistakes, seeing you fall and then slowly get up on your own, or making mistakes and then correcting them on your own, it took a lot of patience on my part. But I think it has made me a better individual at the end of the day. And if you talk about success and failure, I strongly believe that there's nothing like success or failure in parenting. But yeah, if I look at you, I'm a proud mom because you are a young, independent woman who is ready to take on the world. Okay. But if you talk about failure, let me tell you that you have failed miserably. And I feel because of that, I have failed miserably when it comes to the routine basic like life skills like cooking and cleaning which you are not good at. I'm sure that can be focused on later otherwise the whole interview's topic is going to be changed. Yeah, so, so we'll focus on we'll it talk later about that for later. sure. Yeah. So talking about a small happy family, I think mom is the glue that holds it together. I've got impeccable people in my life who have raised me so well so that my parents could go out you know, learn new things and earn themselves a livelihood. And now they have worked hard to get the reputation that they have. So I just want to know in what ways do you feel that I am, I resemble you or I'm similar to you. I'm outer covering is not a part of this cause it is dad's, but I'm sure your DNA has some role to play. Yeah, yeah. So I'll answer your first question first. So if you talk about raising a child, you need a village to raise a child, this, and which is true. So it is not me and dad who raise you. It is the surrounding, the people you are surrounded by. So you have, as you said, a wonderful set of grandparents who have given you really good moral values. Mm. So you are a caring, giving person. Then you have a set of your cousins, your friends who do well. 
And at the end of the day, for any woman, I would say that you have a lot of staff, a team which helps you. So you have to be eternally grateful to the people who help you to be what you are today. And you should never forget them in your life. So that is lesson number one for today. And the second question you asked me was regarding something very important. Is how I resemble you. Yes, so you've had a hard time proving to all your <laughs> friends that I am your mom, right? But although the outer covering doesn't resemble me, you are left-handed like I am. You have got some good oratory skills, a bit of dance skills. So yes, you have a set of genes which I have given to you. And I'm sure they are going to shine brighter in the future. Yeah, I've taken, I guess, all your good qualities are with me. And I, you know, may I will, you know, polish them and make them even better when they come through me. Okay, so moving on, if you were given a chance to go back to becoming a child, would you change anything from what you did previously? As such, my childhood had been good, although I told you there were a lot of changes. But if I were to change one single thing and something which I regret is that I was not focused on sports or physical activity at that point of time. And I did not realize its importance. Although my dad was after my life, my mom wanted me to study and do that particularly well. So uh, sports was not my cup of tea back then. But yeah, I'm trying to learn new things and I'm open to new ideas because we are students for life. Yeah, so as we are doing exercise now, it's never too late. We have got a great personal trainer who teaches us and it's okay. We, we can do it now. Yeah, it's, it's never too then. late. Okay, so I'll ask you a question about me. You know, we have had a brief discussion after I finished grade 10 on what the opportunities of, you know, career options I have. And I guess there are a lot of options that left us into a lot of confusions. But now that I've decided to take science field and B group, that is medicine and follow your footsteps, how do you feel? Oh, I definitely feel proud and happy. But the discussion was that we were open to all ideas, whether you choose commerce, humanities or science. You should know the ins and outs. We wanted to make sure that you had your reality check you knew what were your options what were the advantages disadvantages and you know that at the end of the day we have your back yeah but you know that b group is a long, long journey, journey and yeah. you have to be ready for the struggle and the hustle yeah i am you know you guys have trained me that if you are choosing something you have to be very very sure of it yeah and i guess i hope i do very well and i will work hard okay Moving on now, this is getting too formal. I can't handle it. I'll ask you if I if I introduced you to my first boyfriend, what would be your reaction? Would you shoo him or admire him? Depends on who you choose. Okay. I'm ready. If you have the right choice, I'm definitely going to keep him around and give him all the good things I have to offer. Okay, so he should not replace me. That's it. <laughs> he won't. You are irreplaceable. Okay. So, I had a really great time with you and talking to you. This conversation has been very long and it's, it's in a very long time that it has not ended in some fight or quarrel. That happens with, you. with all teenage parents, Ananya, come on. But still, uh, you know, what we did today was like a dream come true for me because any child dreams of, you know, asking questions to their role model or ideal or a person who they look up to. But I feel who is better than the person who gave them birth, who has raised them. And I guess my role model or my idol is my mother. So thank you for joining me. I'm very grateful thank you. that Thanks you are my Thanks for mother. having me once again. And you happy Mother's time. Day. <laughs> once again, wishing all the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Gracias. Merci. Ardio Zamingos.